Hi, welcome back to another Fusion Basics tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about the transom node in the Fusion tab. Let's get to it. The transom node is used to move stuff around. You can move up, move down, move left, right, stretch, left, right, up, down. You can also zoom in and zoom out. There are a few tricks you could do also. I'll get into that here. Drag the transform node in here. Fusion automatically creates a media out. My pool of footage in, media pool, drag this picture in, close media pool. If I drag this into this viewer, let's change to dual view. Drag this into the left viewer. Drag media out to the right viewer. The size is 1920 by 1280. I want to get it back to 1920 to 1080. So I click on it, control space bar, I type crop. And if we drag this now, it's cropped it, but the composition is not right. I go to crop node and I drag this down. Let me pull this down to be sure. So that's, that's fine now. Let me pull it up a little like that. Connect this to the transform node. Then we have an output. For transform, I can move image left and right. I can move it up and down. I can click here. Let's double click on this to reset it. I can click here, click this keyframe, go to maybe frame 25 or 35, move this up, move this up. If I go to the beginning and I play it, see what it does? It moves in that direction. We can also change the size. We can increase the size. Let's say I click on here, double click on this to reset it. Keyframe this center, which is the position of the image on the frame, then keyframe size. Go to frame 20, increase the size, position the boy a bit better. Then if we play this, Very simple, straightforward stuff. Now back, double click on this to reset it, double click on this to reset it. Angle is just rotating the image, right? It's rotating around the center axis. But if I want it to rotate be about this corner, what I'll do is I'll move the pivot point here to that point. Let me change this to single viewer so we get to see this closer. See this X point thing at the middle there? That's the pivot point. If I move the X value, Sorry, I was moving the center. If I move the pivot of X, you see that thing moving down here. Let's say I set this to zero. Let me type the zero there. And I decide to rotate it, to rotate about that point. If I decide to move the pivot point up to the corner of the image, this would be one. Then if I decide to rotate the image, it will rotate around the corner of the image. So you could make an image look like it just dropped off, right? So if I go here, you can flip the image. You can flip it upside down too. I can click on it, toggle it back. These are just toggles. If I go to transform and I reduce the size, you know, I put the pivot point at that edge here so whenever I reduce size it's going to reduce size to that pivot point then one other thing I wanted to point out is the edges if I click on canvas and I go to wrap it's going to create copies of the image around the original image if I decide to put the pivot at the center where it was before this is the actual image and these are copies of it round of it round round about it if I now check this and I go to duplicate, duplicate just duplicates the edge of the image. And I go to mirror. Mirror creates mirror images of the image. Let's combine all that in a simple example here. Let me copy this. Let me select all this and drag them down here. Now we have this connected to this. Let's disconnect that. Let's get this merge node here. Connect this to the foreground of the merge. Then the, drag a background node, drop the alpha to zero. Connect that to the background node. Drag this to the viewer. 
Now this rectangle mask we have here connected to this mask node here. Increase the corner radius into something like that. Disconnect this. Double click on this to reset it. Then click on this to connect to this. Drag this here. Let's say we want to increase this image size from frame 20. I click on the size. I click on the center, keyframe it. Then I go to frame 40. I keyframe it. I now increase the size a wee bit. Let's say we set it to 1.3. Then I want this to also be on the side like that. So now we have transform and what we've done here is something like this. All right, good. Disconnect this. Let's delete this background because we can use the same background here to do the background for this one. So we don't have to be wasting too many notes on that. Pull this back. Then I connect this crop node to this foreground here. I know this doesn't look so tidy, but guys, hang in there. We're, we're going to get to it. Now, this transform node is happening here. But if we connect this now to this merge node, drag this to the viewer, you see what we've done. So the girl's image starts increasing. And there we go. But now it doesn't look so tight. So what we're going to do is disconnect this. Here, I'm going to add an outline to the edge of that. Right click, copy, right click, paste instance. I want to de instance solid. I want to de instance border width. I want to drag this to about something like this. A bit more, something like that. Then uncheck solid. Then drag a background node. Give this background node a nice color. Click OK. Connect this to the background node. If you drag this to the viewer, you'll see that we have. Let me zoom in so you see what I'm saying. We have this slightly thin border. Now we merge. We now merge this on top of what we have here. It's this transform node. Let's disconnect it. Let's merge this on top of this. Yep, and then we put this transform node here and connect that. So if you go here, we see we now have border around this image. Now to give a little more jazz to it, control space bar, put drop shadow. Now this drop shadow, I want it, um, I want it to happen from the point here where the transform starts and to where the transform ends. So at the point where it starts, I want the drop shadow to be zero. I keyframe it, drop it to zero. Then when it stops, I want it to be back to 0 0.5. Connect this here, connect that. So if we go here and do fit, we play what we've got. So one thing we need to do is this border is showing all through. This is the border, this is the merge. So I want this merge to, at this point, I want it to be zero. I want the blends to be zero. So I click on this, drag it to zero. Then when it's at 40, I want it to be one. So if you go here and play this, simple stuff. You just add a little jazz to where we can put a text node in front of there. Add a transform node there to the text and connect this there. Click on the text. Let's just type something. Let's change the font. Let's see what's there. Increase the size a little bit, little bit, little bit. Make it left aligned. Let's change the color of the text to something purpley. 
Then let's move it here. And the line space and drop it a bit. And um, we'll go to transform. We go to 20. We click on that keyframe it, go to like 50. In fact, we can make it 60 and keyframe that. Go to the first keyframe and drag this off screen. And then we can go here, connect this to the media out and we're good to go. So all the movements we've done so far, they are not smoothened out. So I go to transform one, I go to spline, tick displacement and size. The reason why I'm seeing only one of the tools is because I click show only selected. If I uncheck this, you will see all the nodes showing here, but I don't want that. So I click show only selected tool. I click zoom to fit, select all the keyframes, press F, press T on the keyboard and increase ease in to about 80. It's really smooth and I do that. Then I go to this two, the transform for the text. I go to the spline tool, zoom to fit, select, select all the keyframes, press all the key, F on the keyboard, ease in to about 80. Let's go to the edit page and play it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned one or two things here. Do like and subscribe and have a nice one. Bye for now.